Welcome to Tales from the Tavern, the Sea of Thieves official podcast. And we are in LA at E3 this week. And we managed to pick the most generic room to show that we are in California here. <laughs> uh, and I've got some of the team with me here who are like, you guys have been doing lots of uh, press. Uh, yes. Behind closed doors, like in this, in this room. very room, we have. In this this is room. the behind closed doors area. Yep. So we're going to go around. Let's start from the right and introduce people who are listening rather than watching here. Shelley Preston, senior designer. Uh, Joni, executive producer. Um, I. Oh. Oh. oh are you a, are you a real person? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick up from that. <laughs> I'm John McFarlane, community video manager. Uh, I'm Mike Chapman, design director. Uh, Cameron Thomas, uh, community manager. Um, so yeah, we've been spent. Like, we've uh, the press con- the briefing has been, and we've shown our mm-hmm. our trailer mm-hmm. up there, um, where we teased uh, cursed sails and forsaken shores. Um, so you guys have been covering in the kind of behind closed doors, talking about that kind of stuff. What what can we talk about there? What can we talk about, Mike? <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> if you'd seen the teaser trailer, so we've got yep. skeleton ships coming to Sea of Thieves. Yep. Um, also showing off the, the Brigantine, which is a new ship that we're adding to the game. Uh, built from the ground up for three players to be able to play together. A you know, big area of feedback that we hear from our players is being able to play on a ship designed for three players. If you've got two other friends you want to play with, that's going to be awesome. And also showing off Forsaken Shores for the first time. So Devil's Roar is the name of this new world area that's geologically unstable. You've got volcanoes there, you've got tremors. So really cool thematically, but um, it's a cool change to the gameplay. And as part of that, bringing in the rowboat as well. So yes. big part of the pirate fantasy, another big area of feedback. Um, so yeah, and there's also, with both of those updates, there's, there's new content we haven't shown as well as part of that, but we wanted to show off kind of the, some of the cool things that player's been kind of talking about. Yeah, we wanted to make sure it was a bit like what we've been doing with the content updates so far, kind of like teasing them. You don't want to give everything away right at the very start, right? So we're kind of working our way through and, and yes. making sure we... But I think we've been less teasery with this one than perhaps with the previous <laughs> yeah, yeah. one. Um, uh, but like purposely wanted to show what almost like the headline features are yeah. for each one, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, Curse Sales is literally the Curse Sales. The clue was there all along. Um, <laughs> but, uh, well done if you worked out. Yeah. <laughs> right, and but... Like and that's actually like the, the the skeleton ships itself is something that Mike has long been on record as saying that we would never do. Um, this is true. Yeah, but let's not true. blame Mike. We all have. That's true. Mike. That's no. true. But um, I'm just like I remember the forum post detailing exactly what. Every but, sail on the horizon is a, is another player yeah, ship. Yeah, but, but we like like with launch kind of come and gone and obviously it was amazing and so many players and, and everything but like we, we sat down and went through our roadmap right and figured out yeah. like like here's all the feedback what do we want to do and took into account player behavior around kind of pvp ship battles and trying to give players a, a, a kind of that that ship battle kind of stuff on demand almost and without potentially like negatively impacting yeah. other players yeah. experiences and so it was something that like even though we were really kind of passionately know it's always about other players it just felt like no we should go do this because it will yeah. improve the experience for people right yeah absolutely and i think we're really proud of that right yeah that we've identified something that would bring value to the game players have wanted it for a long period of time and now we're going to do it and at the same time with forsaken chores we're not only expanding the world we're bringing in a whole new theme and a whole change to the gameplay so the 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 threat we're adding there is the world itself and that's going to change the adventures that you go on so going on to an island you're doing a voyage and then you're, you're feeling those tremors. You know, you're looking to the crater and you're seeing a, a black smoke plume and at any moment this volcano could erupt and rain down debris towards players and towards the ship. And that's why the robot makes so much sense, right? That you've got this ability to park the ship, an- park the ship? <laughs> anchor the ship away from the island and then row in. You know, it's what you see in pirate movies is what you dream of and that's coming to see a thief. So it's right. cool. And Shelley, you are the one who's heading up that team design-wise, right? Yeah. Um, so what what is it back at rear um, that you've been kind of working on there? Well, as as Mike said, like the Devil's Roar area is all about that the world coming alive. Like so, we've got our, th- our three areas at the moment, like the, um, our three seas essentially, and they all feel different. They've all got a different tone, but difficulty wise, they're all the same. And so we wanted to create a new area of the world that it looks different. It's going to look awesome and feel amazing. But at the same time, it's going to have that gameplay impact. So what we've actually been doing recently is prototyping like what the things are, that what those geological effects are that are going to have their impact uh, on players when they're in there. So 
that we've been looking at the volcanoes and the tremors, yeah. a few other bits and pieces that we'll talk about and later. And talking about, obviously we have, like, everyone's kind of been <coughs> caught up in E3 at the moment, but the game is still churning away back back at uh, Rare, yes. and we have had the Hungering Deep, like, we haven't done a podcast since the Hungering Deep launched, right. and yet yeah. for that, that's been... Like it's been amazing to see the reaction to that online, and it's been and, incredible, hasn't it? Um, some yeah. of the, the positive reactions around it. It's like, I think that kind of reinforced some of the things that we were trying to test out there, wasn't it? About the kind of positive interaction between crews, yeah. um, and it'll be interesting to see how we how we like move on, like move forward with that in future updates. Yeah. Well, I think it's something that we can like the wanting to make a um, a crew or have to basically crew up with another crew was like was a was a risk it was like something we wanted to try we wanted to see how players would react to that and the reaction's just been like phenomenal it's like beyond what we hoped for the how players have like taken that th that aspect and really just everybody just loves it right like you go to Shark Bay Cove and it's full of ships all talking to each other all wanting you to come on the adventure and I think like for Cursed Sails that's another like thing for that yeah. for the for the, these skeleton ships we'll definitely be looking at ways that people can crew up together to take on the skeleton yeah. ships because it's been something they've really loved to see that kind of social side of the hungering deep resonate so much i think it surpassed even our wildest expectations that you know we're we're naturally going to want to see the good in players and hope that you know they use the tools in a certain way and enriches the game and the fact that we brought in the speaking trumpet and the whole quest line around uh, multiple crews in the world teaming up to take down the megalodon i think you know you can kind of we balance that like assuming there'd be like two or three galleons there, but the fact that you've had even more than that, and we see those epic screenshots of four, five, six galleons and, and sloops kind of like parked up near the parked up. What am I saying? <laughs> Anchored up near the megalodon. You probably um, got that from me. I keep saying I that. Know, recently. Yeah. Um, you know, having that epic encounter. I think that that is so cool. So that's that's something we've always talked about, like bringing different types of encounters. Um, between players in the world, in this shared world, and to see, you know, a few months after launch, that was kind of a big showcase of Hunger in Deep, and to see that side of it land so well, and Sharpbait Cove becoming this, like, social meeting place for <laughs> players to embark on this adventure, that is so cool. And, you know, at the same time, we're listening to feedback. I mean, one of the big areas of feedback, we, you know, we've, we're, we're talking about this week is that our players want more reasons to replay. Um, you know the, these kind of campaigns and these time limited quests, and I'm pretty much straight after you know the release of the Hungry Deep, we've got together and we're planning out cursed sales and what that kind of time limited quest and rewards are going to be, and making sure that that's replayable. So for that period of time when you come in, we celebrate that content. Of course, skeleton ships and cursed cannonballs and everything that's part of that update becomes a part of the world forever. Um, but we want to make sure that we have many ways that players can replay that content. Talking about cursed cannonballs, we've just done our first. Um, build Rat Adventure. We have indeed. Um, which just uh, launched, it will be on Tuesday, um, which is tomorrow for us, or but for you guys it was Or it might be on fun. Wednesday. Or it might be on Wednesday. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was this week. Yeah, it was touched. It was, like, basically, there was, there's, there's a really, new, like a, a complicated new part of this, of um, the Build Rat Adventures, which is the actual Build Rat currency that yeah. comes in as part of this, which is you earn a second currency that, that kind of goes along that you can spend on cosmetics. You can also contribute towards XP with existing um, companies. Yep. And so that uses our services, um, uh, um, which are kind of one of the most complex and complicated part of the whole uh, system. And so, you know, I've been getting emails and I think we got one just before this saying it's 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 in it's sorted it's great but it's going to be Wednesday I think is the good when the um uh, that goes out like we were striving for for Tuesday and we said the 12th it looks yeah. like it's going to be the 13th but we, we it felt it was such an important part of it um so yeah but but Shelley again you were you've been the designer on Skeleton Thrones right yeah so yeah it's been really fun so we've like hidden these 10 thrones around the Sea of Thieves in really interesting locations and the first part of it is going to be trying to find these skeleton thrones but then once you found them like getting to them is going to be an interesting challenge so you'll be firing yourselves out of cannons and like some of them you need to sit in with another crew as well so again that social aspect of working together like finding another crew recruiting another crew maybe using the speaking trumpet to get them to go and fire themselves up into a skeleton throw and have a sit down with you yeah 
And it's going to last a couple of weeks yeah. as well, right? So, because we play tested it, didn't we? And we were like, like originally it was like, we want this for a week. And then we were like, ah, it's quite hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were struggling. Yeah. And we, we like it though as a challenge and yeah. it's going to be time consuming. And we just want to give people yeah. the opportunity to, you know, if they want to complete it, that yeah. they can. Like yeah. give them enough time. So I think that's going to be something we're going to learn with these build rat adventures moving yeah. forward is like, how long is the right amount of time? Yeah, exactly. Like, for? like, are people going to get a chance? Because even now today, like, like we've been meeting people who, like we played Hungry Deep. No, not yet. And we're like, oh, yeah. it's leaving on Tuesday. And they're yeah. like, no, please, longer. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, like with all of these, it's about learning, isn't it? Yeah. It's about take the feedback. It and, yeah. you know, and I think even the Hungering Deep has been fantastic from that social kind of um, ex experiment behavior about can we get crews to come together and behave positively. And uh, Ted actually sent me some data from the BI team today, like yeah. which was that like PVP encounters kind of halved like basically the game become became twice as friendly um, during the <laughs> hungering deep in terms of like ship encounters that didn't end in combat like 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 which is incredible right yeah. like literally the, like the, the, it halved um, but you could feel that yes. playing it yeah. like you literally went in and it, it felt different yeah. like yeah. there was this almost electric like vibe in the air of just everybody was like coming together with this this shared goal and I think that's what's so cool about us doing these um, shorter like campaigns when we bring content in so we're not just bringing in a megalodon and it's just out there like we have this campaign around it and this time limited special kind of moment for people to be a part of and then after that it's really cool that it's just in the world from then on like you don't miss you don't miss out but there is that time limited bit of it yeah. yeah, and I think the social side as well is something we need to monitor because you definitely see like in that first week, especially like like everyone was seeking the hungering deep, yes. right? They were looking yeah. to do that. They were looking to grow up together. And as the second week has kind of gone on, we've definitely seen more people. reports of people struggling yeah. to find other players to play mm -hmm. with because we, we debated it, didn't we, before the end of the first week? Like, do we want to change that change? number? Yeah. Yeah. But we felt so strongly that 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 positivity of that social interaction it was worth keeping that in yeah. even if it meant that occasionally it might be a bit hard to find but when you if you do it's yep. so special compared to if we switched it to like be four players or something then it was instantly it's just going to be mostly single yeah. crews on the galleon right and you you would have been able to do the the megalodon fight and get the stuff but would it have been as rewarding yeah. like like so it's a balance then isn't yeah. it between like how long that to give people enough time to do it but like time to find other people and do it in the right way yeah so I think we need to look at that with um, you know with Curcell is anything where like even like you know the Skeleton Thrones and stuff like we'll look at that first week how's that going yeah. in terms of meeting yeah. other crews is that like like do we want to relax that or like it's yeah. you know let's it's, it's a learning thing because you, you can't accurately predict player mm -hmm. behaviour like around this you can have a good guess um, but you learn right because yeah. we're, we're doing something different you're trying to drive player behaviour and kind of you know, the human psychology of interacting with others yeah. and stuff. It's it's fascinating to, to, to learn. Each, no, it is, though. Each time we do it, it right? Like, so, yeah, we, like, again, we were surprised about how well it went, right? Genuinely, because we thought, like, is this a bit of a risk, like, driving this kind of behaviour? But to all of us went and played it, right? Like, we all played the Hungering Deep and we all just had amazing experiences, had right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I love, like, I, love those, I love those stories that, you know, we've seen on Reddit and on our forums of friends, new friendships made based on the Hungering Deep, people coming together to kind of summon the Megalodon, but then continuing to enjoy the rest of the content. Mm. Almost that fleet that amasses, um, you know, in that grid square and they take down the Megalodon, they then go straight on to a skeleton fort or they go straight on to do quests together. Because they're built I love a bond. That. Like, exactly, that's yeah. really cool. And like right at the very start of our E3 <coughs> trailer, um, we had a couple of those stats up about like, you know, like 1.5 million friends. Made. We have a that's wall. That's my favorite right ever start, us, the 1.5 million friends made on the Sea of Thieves like that is like we set out to try and make a game where people would not have to have friends before they play Sea of Thieves they could make friends in Sea of Thieves we wanted to build a game that brought people together and bonded people so see 1.5 million friendships made that that I think that's yeah that's and awesome. we're, we're assessing at the moment I think for, again looking at our telemetry to see in the hungering deep did that drive up like in terms of like yeah. the um, the average amount of friends being made and I, I resolutely believe it will have is we just need to look at the data and kind of go like how, how much of an impact did it have yeah and, and I guess I guess we're that kind of social side of it we'll, we'll continue to kind of I guess play with that with the Bills Rat Adventures and the larger content releases but what's great I guess this week is really the I guess air players can kind of see the kind of rhythm of it now where there's these content releases so we've got Hungry and Deep that's come out got a medium size update you know they've seen some more of Curse Cells and Forsaken Shores that we're talking about but then these Bill's Rat adventures that are happening between so there's always on a regular basis there's reasons to come back to Sea of Thieves you know earn that currency and then 
it's a way for us to introduce, you know, you know, we hear that feedback loud and clear around, you know, we want more cosmetic variety in the game. You know, we want some very different looking cosmetic items. And, you know, we've added cosmetics since launch, but Bill's Rat Adventures allow a really nice way to bring cool looking things into the game. So as part of the Skeleton Thrones, there's, you know, there's these awesome looking cosmetics, the, you know, the skeleton cosmetics that I think players are really going to love. But also, you know, we've got the letters of recommendation in there. So these are effectively the Bills Rats bribing the trading company. So if you earn their currency, you can buy these letters of recommendation in your chosen trading company and earn that little bit of progress. So the way you can fast track your progress in those trading companies. And you can also spend your Bills Rats doubloons on gold bags. So there's little ways you can fast track your progress as well, as well as getting these unique cosmetics. And the Bills Rat Adventures allow us to showcase, I guess kind of like, more like smaller mechanic ideas. So it's not showcasing existing content, it's these new little things that we add to the game and we can showcase them as part of these Bill's Rat adventures and just have this constant addition of new cosmetics and things to go earn in the game. So. I didn't realise they were called letters of recommendation. No, 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 no. That's just me. <laughs> so there's like, yeah, I'm just like, yeah. a letter of golden like recommendation, which is a letter of mystical commendation, and a, of recommendation, a letter of formal recommendation. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But that's it. I like, I like it. Yeah. Well, that's what it wraps it up. I'm, I'm in. I'm sold. Good. And good. It's a good job, isn't it? It's life. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the patch. <laughs> and then, so we don't have a ton of time for this podcast because yep. you've got interviews to do after this, so we're just going to squeeze it in in the middle. Uh, but we do want to get some questions from okay. the people coming community because we did ask Twitter yep. and we want to get some of them. You've got some there nice. and I've got some, so you can jump on first, Cameron, see what you've got. And I'll scroll through while you're... Cool. Um, so we have one um, yeah. for, <laughs> for uh, uh, Jace the Fox on Twitter. Um, he says, Ahoy, uh, do you have uh, more content planned past the last fall uh, slash winter mark on the content treasure map? The last, where would that be? The last fall slash winter, as in... That is... Does that mean like the next three for this year? Like what's in those kind of thing? Right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so we do, like, so the, the team that was on the Hungering Deep is already on to the fourth one, yep. right? And we've, it's got yep. a name, hasn't it? It has got a name. It has got a name, yeah. So yeah, it's going to be cool to talk more about that in the future, but yeah, it has a name and the team has started prototyping, right? Yeah. So There's been to prototype some the new things we're looking at there, but that's, that's after Forsaken Shores. Yeah. And it rhymes with, what does it rhyme with? Full snails. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is... <laughs> sounds, sounds like you've given the game away. But, <laughs> 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 that's like but maybe that's what it is. <laughs> maybe that's what it is, because it is coming in full. Yeah. And we've yeah. always talked about new threats. <laughs> new threats? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Giant snail. <laughs> maybe the snail just It's not a shell, it's a treasure chest yeah. Yeah. on the back. Just... Yeah. yeah, but um, a little, little safety stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really embarrassed. A about moment that one. of madness on the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> That's what three hours of sleep does to you. Um, but uh, yeah, so that team's already working on that stuff, and it's really exciting. Like I think, like like it, re it really is because, like the way that we want to grow the game, you can talk to that better than me in terms of the different kind yeah. of categories, criteria, I guess. Right. Yeah. So, I guess. We've got to be mindful around these content releases that everyone's at different stages of that Sea of Thieves journey. So, you know, you might have bought the game at launch, you might already be a pirate legend, you might be well on your way to becoming one, or, you know, later down the line, you might come into the game based on, you know, seeing Curse seeing these awesome skeleton ships, you know, using the rowboat in Forsaken Shores. That might be the reason for to bring new players in. So, we've got to expand the game kind of intently across a number of areas. So, we kind of break it down into the following. So, there's... There's ways to play, which is inclusive of, uh, I guess, new quest types uh, and new ways to enjoy the content um, with your crew. So an example of that would be the Brigantine ship, a new way that you can play with two other players. So a three player ship you know, built for the ground up for that crew size. And then we've got goals. So it's important that we bring in goals for everyone. Right now, that's our focus. That's where we're seeing the kind of the resounding area of feedback is new goals to aspire to. But we also need to be mindful that more and more players are reaching Pirate Legend. So they're going to need more goals, more things to aspire to as part of that. And then the last part is really what we call the journey, which is, I guess, for some time, what we've always described as you know, the heart of Sea of Thieves, the big tools and small tools and threats that... When you're out there on a quest, these are the things that happen emergently and make each session that you have feel different. So we're obviously bringing in the rowboat as part of Forsaken Shores, and that would be an example of a big tool. 
So that, that would be your reaction. That would be um, not only something that makes sense in terms of Forsaken Shores, it's also going to bring value to the whole game. So you think about what the robot's going to bring to the game. You've got that whole gameplay of anchoring the ship away from these um, volcanic eruptions and rowing your way in to kind of complete what you're trying to complete. But also having the robot's going to enrich all of your adventures in the Sea of Thieves. So if you're a solo player, for example, and you typically play that way, having the robot means that you can make one back and forth to the island, filling it up of chests and schools, whatever you're, whatever you're after, and then making one journey back to the ship, avoiding sharks along the way. And all the kind of emergent things you can imagine um, that... Players will use their own creativity, you know, loading up with gunpowder kegs, you know, maybe using it to take down the skeleton ships. There's going to be um, lots of ways that, you know, we can't predict right now how players are going to use that content. And then the smaller tools, which is things like the speaking trumpet that's, you know, landed so well in terms of the social interactions between players, things like the drum. So we're going to be, it, it's important that we expand the, the game across all of those areas. So the whole, that's kind of the landscape of the game and all of that's going to get richer, you know, a little bit with Hunger in Deep, and then increasingly so with Curse Sales, Forsaken Chores, and then the content updates, the three more that are coming this year. Yeah, and just to wrap up on that question, the f and we're spinning up a fourth team that's yeah. kind of going to be ready yeah. to go in the start of July, and they're going to be taking kind of the end of year updates. Yes. So they've got kind of a five month lead time to get yeah. to that, with the Curse Sales team, we'll move on to kind of our fifth update. I think. That's right. And so, yeah. And do you want to we'll do a rhyme in? Um. <laughs> 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 that, that one's a little tougher. That is a little tougher. That one's a little, little tougher. Little tougher. But, um, and, and it, like, yeah, that, we'll give it away completely. I think. <laughs> but, um, uh, but uh, yeah, so like, we're into we're into that rhythm, right? And um, it's it's exciting, isn't it? It's yeah. like it really is like that. I love the kickoff processes with those teams and like trying yeah, to figure out awesome. how much stuff we can get in yeah. into each update and what works together and stuff. So yeah, mm. but I know we're conscious. We're we're tight for time, and we took about five minutes answering that one. So uh, yeah. Um, I've got one here from Action Section on Twitter who says, where do you get your story ideas from for like, the Hungering Deep, etc.? That's interesting. I mean, it, it's a... As in, well, the question was story ideas. Story like, ideas, yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the kind of lore-based yeah. stuff. That, that, that's actually the absolutely awesome part of the process. When we kind of come together and... It's quite an intentful part of how we're going to add content to the game. Around not just... You know, put, putting these bunch of features into a patch note and just releasing it to the world. It's about giving people a tour of the content and setting it up in the right context. So the idea of like bringing Merrick in and celebrating the fact that you know we're adding a drum and the drum being used to summon the Megalodon and speaking trumpet being a big part of how crews come together. I mean, it's really just like kind of looking at the content and, and trying to weave a tale and introduce that content that makes sense in Sea of Thieves. It's something we've always talked about. How can we introduce content in the game and have it feel at home in the Sea of Thieves world? And it's really just like a, a bunch of us getting together and kind of brainstorming ideas of like, what's the right way to celebrate the things that we're adding? And you know, we, we did that with Hungry and Deep. It was great to see it resonate so well, but that's exactly what we've done with the curse sales and inclusive of all the feedback that we've had on Hungry and Deep. You know, how can we explain the reason like where have these skeleton ships come from now the fact that they're, they're going to bring these cursed cannonballs to the world and that's part of the story that we're going to continue to tell in sea of thieves like ways that you know it makes sense of where where where, where these things have come from in the world and that's something we'll continue to explore with, with the yeah. updates coming. it's a really collaborative process as well though because like like obviously from a design perspective you come up with this quest and this vision and then but then from a video perspective like yourself and the rest of the video team go and look at what we're planning to bring in and then come and pitch almost hey here's what we should do as a teaser right that, that kind of sets the scene for this um and we bounce that around and stuff and like it's like so yeah everybody a lot of people contribute to that like that yeah. law right and that story and that how we sell that to people because yeah it's a really interesting process because sometimes what we think of from the video perspective will inform some of the things yeah. you do in the game. Yeah. And then likewise, like obviously we're looking and as things change and stuff, like we're kinda of looking at oh, how do we tweak that and like how do we get that into the trailer to try and make it as like a like kind of background clue mm. as to what's gonna happen. And I think people got really attached to Merrick. Like they really enjoy yeah, like, him as it's a great. character and it's like And and the crab. And the crab. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, I think the you, the video trailer. team, are really keen on getting crabs in. We, aren't we you? love the crab. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> but, uh, we'll look at it. It's really cool though, because I think, like, um, again, just thinking about how. <laughs> um, yeah, so thinking like how that um, the campaign is sort of like changing the way the community is interacting with each other. Um, 
again, like the way that we've sort of been like promoting them and advertising them and, you know, seeding that information to the community um, and getting the speculation going on the law and everything. Because I think that, you know, it's like every, um, I remember sort of like at launch, people were talking about, oh, you know, is it like finding interesting things in the world, etc. cetera. Um, and us sort of like fe feeding them a trailer um, that has a, <laughs> that has, you know, it has, has Merrick and everything like that. Oh, right, up right up. All right, okay. <laughs> well, so, um, yeah, so I was giving them a trailer that has, you know, America, and, you know, he's explaining some, you know, some law in the world, et cetera. Um, is, you know, he's getting people really excited and a lot of speculation on Reddit and our forums, et cetera. So I, I found it really interesting that, you know, going forward, um, you know, the way that we're, we're, we're giving information out to the community is just changing how they're all talking to each other and interacting and socializing, so. Well, it. What announced feature are you guys most looking forward to seeing implemented? Uh, unless you want to leak a feature or two. <laughs> oh, oh. oh no, don't stop. Go it. to Mike to leak a no, feature. No, no, no. Um, Come on. Do well. I'm Do well. really looking forward to the yeah. rowing boat because I think we're going to see some really interesting just ways that people are going to use that in ways that we've like not predicted. I mm. think it's going to be really cool. It's the snails for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the cannibals. I about, I <laughs> the snails and cannibals. No, yeah. like, I should have said the snails. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd say the, the cursed cannibals. Cursed I think snails. The, the, the cursed snails. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, cursed cannibals. I, 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 love, I love it when we're, try, we're pushing more on the fantastical elements of Sea of Thieves and bringing in that kind of magical version of the cannonballs. I think it'll add a whole new dimension to ship encounters. And obviously, your battles against skeleton ships. So, looking forward to that. Do we get is the mutiny ball on that list, or is it not? Mm. Do we not do it? Mm. No. No. You want that? <laughs> Come in, <laughs> give it time. Give it time. We're always listening to player feedback. That's, and that's you true. Count as a player, so I'll, you are I'll, a player I'll as well. Right? My, I'll submit my vote on the forum. <laughs> right. If we had sixty seconds, which the question? Uh, okay. So, any chance of letting the megalodon loose on the on the whole map to attack randomly like the kraken? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next. But I think. I think. Confirmed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let, let me waffle. For you. <laughs> no, problem. no. No. I think the thing we want to do different with the megalodon is make it feel more like, um, you know, this this wildlife in the world. So rather than it just uh, attacking just mysteriously, the sense of someone can spot it, like this, the fin kind of break the waves and emerge out of the water, and it may not attack you just seeing it around the world. And, you know, you might have that trigger-happy crew member on the, on the galleon who so might... So it's the waking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then it, it turns and attacks you. But I think that's our approach. With it. It, it's something that enriches the journey. Mm -hmm. So you're out there, you know, on quests and you might encounter the Megalodon, but rather than it just being something that attacks mercilessly, it, which it may do, um, sometimes you can just see it in the world and it may not attack you. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Well, Sounds to round good. this up, um, before the PR team come in and like scream at us, uh, <laughs> thank you very much for tuning in, and we will get back to having like a full-length podcast when we get back to the studio. But keep uh, your eyes tuned on our YouTube channels, the social channels. Your eyes tuned. Ears tuned. Ears tuned. Eyes. <laughs> eyes peeled. Eyes peeled. Um, right. uh, on our YouTube channel and our, um, our Twitter. You've, you've thrown me all off. <laughs> Uh, well, if you'd got it right, <laughs> <laughs> you could have just let it slide, let YouTube pick up on it and comment on it all the way down. Um, but yeah, check out for like more E3 coverage. We'll have like tons of stuff coming this week and next. So um, keep checking back, and you'll we've got the trailer obviously this week. You'll have the Build Right Adventures, and Drew's going to keep us up to date um, on the Tuesday Dev Update stuff. So he'll be there keeping everyone up to date while Joe is here in America, yeah. gallivanting around <laughs> in America, and. Uh, and then, unfortunately, the next time is going to be back under the table, so I won't get to show these uh, again. <laughs> but uh, that, was, that was really weird. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you but, want to end? Yeah. <laughs> so, I want to end on a high. Please make that into a gif. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, and yeah, stay tuned. John, you didn't nail it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Burn. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>